Uh, hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we're continuing our touch points between Karate and Aikido. Um, there is a kata that we do called Seisan, where we come around like this, and there's this movement. And it's this movement at the end, turning over, where I think there's a crossover point between the Seisan and a Yongkyo. Um, in that sense, if I can borrow you. So if, uh, I'll just take your hand, easy, okay. right? So when I come up here, so I've already done uh, this motion here. When I turn this up and over, then I can get a control uh, through this point here. Uh, so this is my understanding of it. Um, can work off of a punt, so if you're to throw a punch, catch in, up, and around this way. Um, and it can work off of either arm. So it doesn't matter which one we're working off of, it can work down this way. That's a fairly crude understanding of it. When I do it, I tend to do it as a crank because it's still a low level understanding. Um, our class today talked about locking the shoulder and trying to project. So at this point, what I'd like to do is turn it over to uh, uh, Suresh Sensei and Tanesh Sensei to explain from a slightly higher level of refinement on that particular point. And this is the crossover point for Seisan. So gentlemen, please. Okay. So uh, before we start, uh, Yongkajo is an extremely difficult technique as, as uh, Tim Sensei can, can attest to. Uh, it's it's the, the concept where all of your mass, all of your positioning cannot actually be focused into one single point. The point that we generally use is this first knuckle here. All right? uh, getting the timing, getting the placement and uh, seeing how Tim Sensei has actually uh, floated Uke to put him in a weak position where the, 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 the Yonkajo is actually usable. All of that takes uh, a lot of practice and time. So for example, uh, when, when we try to focus on a Yonkajo, the whole point is where my position, if I'm falling backwards, there's nothing that I can actually apply or that I can use to influence. In Tim Sensei's position in the kata, his weight was coming forward and as he, as he had that, there was a lifting, a floating of the uke, and then a takedown of uh, the uke's balance after the uke was weakened. But for Aikido purposes, most of our stance, we will always have our weight forward. There has to be either a checking or floating, exactly the same as was shown in the kata and the explanation earlier. But when we do uh, the yonkajo, we don't want to lift up and remove the, the palm from the uke. What, when this happens, what happens is my thumb becomes the fulcrum and I have to use the thumb as the fulcrum to crank and apply all the force. When that happens, my shoulder comes up. We want to avoid that where possible. So, ski. So from here, hip, do the check, get the uke in a weak position, and then you can do your takedown. So one more time, just here. From here, do the lock and maintain control over the situation, but you can go free again. So I just wanted to also uh, show in the kata uh, where that point comes. So usually the kata is starting here and then it's coming out and there's a series of these punches. Different styles do it a little bit differently. And then there's usually some motion like this and then there's the turnaround and then this here and then this here and this one. So, so that's the kata. Um, I won't do the whole kata because we're not supposed to do the whole kata, but that's the section that I'm talking about. There. Gents, thank you so much. I think that covered some stuff. Um, if you're out there and you're doing karate and you're seeing some things, you should try to find a Aikido dojo close to you. Um, spend some time on the mats with them. I think that it will really open your eyes. Uh, it will raise the level of refinement for what you're doing. I think you'll be happy for it. So that's it. Thanks.